this problem, it's just which which one of these out of the pair have the hi higher hi boiling point. So what you do for these type of problems is just look for um, what type of forces are present. If they're the same force, um, then look for the molar mass. If the molar mass is the same, look for which one is more complex. So we'll go through it. Any or XE. So what type of forces are present? Well, any is a dispersion. Most, uh, most things are dispersion forces. So any and XE both have dispersion forces. Uh, now we look for dipole-dipole. Well, they can't because it has to be polar to have a dipole-dipole. So therefore, these have the same forces. Now we look for what makes them different. And what makes them different is molar mass. So XE, if you look at the periodic table, it actually has a higher molar mass. Therefore, it'll have more electrons. Um, the more electrons will be more, uh, more free to move, meaning more polarizable. The more polarizable um, the electrons are, um, the higher the partial charges, and therefore the higher the boiling point. So just take away that the higher the molar mass, um, the higher the boiling point, if the forces are the same. So these forces are the same. Um, this is the higher uh, molar mass, so therefore this will have the higher boiling point. Next, CO2 or CS2. Once again, just look for the uh, forces. So both of these have dispersion forces. Why? Because um, most things do, and we look now we look for dipole-dipole. So to determine if a molecule is dipole-dipole, uh, just look and see if um, it's polar or nonpolar. So if you draw the loose structure, uh, you'll see that the structure is actually nonpolar for both of these. So now since we have identified that both of these um, have the same forces, now we can look at molar mass. And we see that CS2 actually has a higher molar mass than CO2. Therefore, the higher molar mass uh, gives it a higher boiling point. And once again, the higher, the higher molar mass is just because the more electrons, um, the higher the charge, the, and the higher the charge, the, the more they want to stick to each other. And the, if they want to stick to each other, that means that you have to have more energy to break it apart. Therefore, it will have a higher boiling point. So now, CH4 or Cl2. Uh, once again, just determine the, the forces present. So we know that both of them have dispersion forces. Now we look for dipole-dipole. Is this, can it have a dipole-dipole? We'll determine if it's polar or nonpolar. So if you draw the Lewis structure, it's, you see that it's nonpolar, um, means it's a tetrahedral structure. And since it's nonpolar, it will only have dispersion forces. Now Cl2, it's just a diatomic, so it's going to share those uh, electrons evenly. Uh, therefore, it'll be uh, dispersion two. Um, therefore, now you just now we since we know that the forces are the same, we just we just look for the higher molar mass. Uh, when you look at the periodic table, Cl two has a higher molar mass. Therefore, Cl two has a higher boiling point. Next, F two or Li um, lithium fluoride. So for this, uh, just look at, uh, once again, the forces. F2 is a diatomic, therefore it will be dispersion forces. Um, there's no dipole-dipole because it can't, it's not polar. LIF, though, um, it's actually, you have to identify that lithium is actually a metal, and this is a non-metal. So a metal to a non-metal actually has an ionic bond. Therefore, when it uh, joins with other lithium fluoride um, molecules, uh, this will actually it will actually uh, have ion-ion forces um, because these only have partial charges because it's intermolecular forces. This Li plus one, plus one, that's a full charge. So these charges will actually be stronger um, than any of the intermolecular forces. So LiF actually wins in this case. It will have a higher molecular force. Now the final one, NH3 or PH3. So for this one, you have to you have to see you have to once again do the same thing. What forces are present? Dispersion forces are present in both of these. Next, look for dipole dipole. So dipole dipole means that um, if it's if it's uh, electronegative. So we determine that both of these are actually polar. But one now since we know that it's dipole dipole we can go on to the third force, which is hydrogen bonding. So is this hydrogen bonding or not? 
Well, hydrogen bonds to three specific, or, or hydrogen bonding occurs in three specific elements, which are fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. And nitrogen is present here. So this actually will have hydrogen bonding. Here, it, it's now one of those three elements, so fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. So this won't have hydrogen bonding. So this will have dispersion and dipole. This one, ha this one will have dispersion and hydrogen bonding, which is a strong type of dipole-dipole. So this one will win in this case. So this, so each of these are the um, highly higher boiling points of the two.